Hello doctors, welcome back to our channel. Today we are going to see about jugular venous pressure. Before that, let's see what is jugular venous pulse. It is defined as oscillation of the blood in the internal jugular vein which reflects the pressure changes in the right atrium during the cardiac cycle. From this, we can conclude jugular venous pressure as the vertical distance between the top column of the blood and the right atrium. So basically, normal jugular venous pressure is 6 to 8 cm of water. Where we will check? We will check on the neck region, especially in the place of right internal jugular vein. So do you have any toe? I am having a toe. Why we particularly check on the internal jugular vein and why we choose on the right side? Okay, let me explain. Let's assume this is a right atrium and this is superior vena cava. As you see here, right internal jugular vein extends is almost straight line to superior vena cava. So it is favoring the transmission of the hemodynamic changes of the right atrium. Next, how we will check? We ask the patient to comfortably sit on the bed. Head portion of the bed is elevated 30 to 45 degrees. And we calculate from the Lewis sternal angle on the second intercostal space. By the way, I forgot to mention that we don't palpate for jugular venous pulse. We use torchlight to check the jugular venous pulse. Again, I am saying it is very important that the pulsation only can be seen. We can't palpate. Okay, let's move to jugular venous pressure wave. We can see three positive waves. Those are a, C, V and two negative waves, X, Y, descent. In general, jugular venous pulse always fall on inspiration in normal person. If it is rise, it is pathology. Now we will see about waves of jugular venous pressure. First comes our PA wave. It happens in atrial system. I have made a simple but efficient diagram of heart. If you ever had watched JTX cartoon channel, you may be familiar with this. In that logo, there will be a only one eye and it is located in this area. Same like that, anything happens in the right atrium will be the reason for jugular venous pressure. Okay, let's see what happens during atrial systole. In atrial systole, atrium starts to contract. This will make the positive pressure in the atrium. So the blood in the superior vena cava will deflect upwards. This causes the positive A wave. Next comes C wave. It happens in isovolumetric contraction. During that tricuspid and pulmonary valve in closed position and the ventricle starts to contract. So the pressure in the ventricle becomes increased. This causes tricuspid valve to push the blood upward and become bulge which lead to C wave. Okay, next X wave. It happens in ventricular system. Aortic and pulmonary valve will open. So the blood rush into the vessels. Pressure in the ventricle becomes decreased. This causes the valve come back its normal position. So there will be a downward blood movement. Next is V wave. It happens in isovolumetric relaxation. During this, blood which comes in atrium. Rebound due to the closed tricuspid valve, which pushes the blood upward. And the last comes our Y wave. It happens during rapid ventricular filling. Blood from the superior vena cava and inferior vena cava directly flow into ventricle, which will push the blood downwards. This causes the Y wave. Now we will see about some important pathology of these waves. The first is the large A wave. This happens in the condition like tricuspid and pulmonary valve stenosis, Eisenmenger syndrome, pulmonary hypertension, scleroderma, and the most common pediatric congenital heart failure, which is tetralogy of Feller, and also in mitral stenosis. In case of right tricuspid stenosis, the blood flow in the ventricle decreases. We already said that A wave happens in atrial systole, but in tricuspid stenosis, the atrial pressure during the atrial systole increase due to reduced outflow. This causes the large A wave. In mitral stenosis, the pressure in the left atrium increase. 
so increase in the pressure of the pulmonary vein which causes the pulmonary edema this will lead to hypoxia as a compensatory reaction peripheral resistance will increase this will lead to pulmonary hypertension which causes increase in atrial pressure one thing if you have noticed in this case prolonged mitral stenosis will cause compensatory hypertrophy in the right ventricle the second is absence of a wave it happens in atrial fibrillation it happens due to the loss of power of the atrium third is the super large a wave it is also called as canon a wave or giant a wave it happens in complete heart block or ventricular tachycardia as you see here in the both of this case there will be a simultaneous contraction of the atria and ventricle and we can see av dissociation in this case next is absence of x wave this happens in tricuspid regurgitation usually x wave happens due to pressure in the left ventricle decrease but in this case there is a backflow of the blood through the incomplete closed valve this makes the x wave absent in severe case of tricuspid regurgitation there will be a positive x let's see in the graph in graph you can see cv wave usually it will go downward and steep y descent so in tricuspid regurgitation we can see absence of x wave cv wave and steep y descent and the last one is absence of y descent normally y happens in relaxation of the heart but during cardiac tamponade there will be a problem with relaxation due to high pressure in the pericardial sac pushes the heart inwards and also conjunction of the vessels will decrease the blood filling so absence of y wave seen let's talk about some tricky mcqs if the question asked like steep x and steep y that will be indicating the constrictive pericarditis in other case if the question asks steep x but the absent y indicates the cardiac tamponade thank you for watching hope you see on the next video